Hello friends, this year I'm starting a new series of, for me, interesting experiments in pollinating dorset horn adenium. Dorset horn adenium is a mutation of adenium plants with very curly leaves and slow growth. It's the curliest type of adenium and it's called dorset horn because dorset horn sheep have very curly horns. Before I show you what I'm trying this year to do with uh, pollinating dorset hornadenium, uh, I'd like to briefly tell you what I already did. Well, First, I bought seeds a little more than three years ago of Adenium Thai Soko Chada Page that give only one to three percent of offspring dorset horn. I bought, I think, twice 150 seeds. And altogether I got from first batch one dorset horn and from second batch I think three. Well anyway, I kept some of those magnificent non-curly plants that have a very thick trunk, short branches, and uh, smaller growth than the regular Arabicum. Taisoko is a semi-dwarf Arabicum with shiny leaves, so as opposed to the regular Arabicum, they don't attract uh, so much the mites, the red spider mites, which is a main um, pest of Arabicum, Adenium Arabicum. So that was my first stage. Then, once the Taisoko Chadapench aged enough to bloom, I cross-pollinate one with another, got plenty seed pods, plenty seeds, and this way I got several hundred dorset horns. These ones are from year before last and here are some from last year I have more than that so I fulfill my dream of being a vegetable shepherd shepherd of sheep of a dorset horn that bloom where they root. Then I did another experiment also where I pollinated some of these magnificent Taisoko Chada Pech with red double obesums in hope that I would get 
Dorset Hornadeniums with redder flowers, hopefully double, and faster growth because obesum grows way bigger and way faster. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. No one offspring was curly, but they did have a body sort of like in between obesum and Taisoko, and when they bloomed, I pollinated them one with another to get the F2 generation to see if recessive gene wouldn't show up. And lo and behold, it sure did. Most of the plants grew just looking Thai soko like but two of them are curly. Here is one, and here is another. The time will tell if they'll grow faster than the more regular dorset horn, and also the time will tell if the flowers will be redder and or double petal. Double petal means two rows of five petals. Five and five is ten. Well, this is the result of my pollination from last year. Another experiment that I did is that I took seedlings of dorset horn and grafted them onto some big plants of obesum somalense mix in hope that it'll grow faster bloom sooner and uh, from literature I knew that they would lose their curliness but when air layered later the new leaves would again be curly. My question was, I was wondering if they bloom sooner would the cross of one with another even though they don't no longer have a uh, curly leaves would they be 100% curly well lo and behold yes that's how I got this easy batch instead of growing hundreds of seeds to get 1 to 2 percent curly I got 100 percent curly from every seed part these are the plants I'm talking about, where I grafted the curly dorset horn that lost its curliness, but not its ability from its pollen and its stigma to produce, here is the other one, to produce 100% of the offspring with the curly leaves. And this year, because weather got warmer, they bloom again. So, that allows me to do new experiment. If I cross-pollinate this plant that doesn't produce one to three percent of offspring curly, but 100% when crossed with each other. If I cross it with something else, would it give me meager 1 to 3% jumping over generation? Like I just showed you happened to me with the other experiment. I'm sure it's not going to be 100%, but how about if giving me some curly in a 
right away generation. If I cross pollinate today, three months later I get ripe seeds, plant them, two months later I already see what kind of leaves they have. Would some of them be curly? I have no idea. That brings me to the point of this year's experiments. So I'm looking what to, what to pollinate it with. As you see, I already did. This is not the first flower of this month. And I already did here. So what I did first, I pollinated it with a plant that gives offspring micro broccoli, extremely small leaves, to see can I get dorset horn, curly leaf, with micro broccoli? Then another flower bloom, and I crossed it with a plant that is giving very small leaves but much bigger, but with a very chubby bottom. Dorset horn has chubby bottom, not, di not this chubby. So, that's my another attempt. And today, I was hoping to cross it with a plant that is very much into growing tall, tall stems. Well, this one has no flower buds. It's called Adenium socotranum. I might not live long enough to see it bloom. But I grafted some some years back to speed it up. So one of my grafted has big flower bud but by the time it opens the other plants flowers might be too old. So I check my Adenium somalense. No such luck. No flower bud. So what I decided in my experiment of trying to create dorset horn that likes to grow upward and not so branchy is to cross one of my grafted dorset horn flowers with my cross of Adenium socotranum vidobesum and another of my grafted blooming grafted dorset horn with white star. In the past I never had a good idea about pollinating the star and so I actually don't know does it have a pollen. Some flowers do and also some plants don't. Some flowers do and some flowers don't and also some plants don't and also some cultivars don't. Or how about if it has a damage stigma. So anyway, if it's not possible, if I won't succeed, then I might pollinate two flowers of my Socotranum obesum hybrid with dorset horn. So that's my rehash of previous experiments with dorset horn pollination and introducing you to my new experiment which is gonna give results no sooner than soonest in about five months. Goodbye friends.